I recently got a really nice email from a subscriber who'd watched my making a goldfish video which I'd taken from this Intarsia book written by Cathy Wise. They were new to Intarsia and asked if I had any more videos planned and would I be prepared to work through some of the projects in the book. Now I said that I'd be happy to give it a go and I explained that originally I had planned to do just that but then I realised that Intarsia wasn't as easy as I first thought and I didn't want to make a video with the end result looking nothing like the projects in the book. We had a good chat about sometimes the best way to learn is to simply just dive right in so that's exactly what I did. So I said that I'd do a whole series on Intarsia videos where I'll be working through this book, starting with the butterfly as I've already made the goldfish on a previous video. There are some projects in here that I'm not really a fan of, but I'll give them all a go nonetheless. The book is aimed at beginners, but as you'll see in the video, I did struggle. Not so much with making it, but just making it look nice. But I guess that comes with practice and I'm still just a beginner, and I don't do enough scrolling to be good at it yet. So the first thing that I needed to do was to print out the butterfly for the book. Even that had its problems and it took two of us to get a decent print out. But once we had the decent copy it was easy enough to print more out. Now I will add that I don't have all the fancy words needed for this project so I decided to use up some offcuts from a previous project and opted for Maranti and a scrap piece of Tunga Groove Pine which wasn't ideal but it's all that I had. Now the first mistake I made was not following the instructions in the book properly. It's so easy to miss part or skip bits thinking that you know better and I found myself having to look back at various steps after making mistakes or having to repeat procedures more than necessary. But there are also a few things that I did differently because of either a lack of certain tools or because I had alternative ways of doing things that I found easier. So I cut out the pattern into the relevant pieces and following the grain direction as instructed by the book. I like to use this blue masking tape on the wood then spray onto the masking tape and stick my pattern on top. This allows the patterns to be easily removed later on with no sticky residue left. The spray glue can be quite messy so I place some palette wrap under the wood and that helps to clean up afterwards. One thing that I didn't see when masking up was a knot in the pine which ended up right in the middle of one of my pieces. I also stuck one piece too close to the tongue and groove edge so I made another piece just in case it was going to cause a problem. I used a number 6 skip tube blade as that's what I had available. Now I like to work outside if I can as the wind helps remove all the sawdust but it was close to freezing and it made it quite tricky because it was so cold. The ground has flags which are naturally uneven so the scroll saw had a slight wobble to it so that wasn't a good start but I proceeded to rough cut the individual pieces. Now I don't always wear long sleeves and gloves when using machinery if I can help it but it was freezing cold. But to be fair it shouldn't be an issue with a scroll saw and if anything the gloves were helping me grip the pieces better. It was at this point that I realised this was going to be a real struggle. I was recently put on some medication for a heart issue and one of the side effects is that it causes me to have double vision. I didn't realise how much of a problem that would be until I needed to use a scroll saw to cut along the fine lines of the pattern. The book explains how important it is to cut accurately because some pieces fit inside other pieces and if they aren't cut with a certain degree of accuracy then there could be on slightly visible gaps. I knew straight away that this was going to be a problem and considered stopping the video at this point. But if I'm honest, I think even if I could see the pieces properly, I'd still have a problem getting them to fit neatly, through lack of scrolling skills. So I carried on, but I knew it wasn't going to look great. There was a couple of ways the book showed to do this wing, and I'm not sure whether I chose the easy way or the hard way, but I drilled a hole in the piece so that I could thread the blade through for the internal cuts. Sod's law my pillar drill broke, so I had to use a battery drill.
Now even though this is a beginner project, it's still really tricky because it's not just a case of cutting along all the lines. These internal pieces need to fit neatly inside the wings and you need to allow for the thickness or curve of the blade. Otherwise, when you put the pieces together, you're left with a gap in between the two pieces, which is the thickness of the blade. This is where I let myself down because I just couldn't see the line properly with the double vision. With all the pieces cut, I numbered each piece on the back. It probably isn't necessary on this small project, but it's good practice, especially for other projects which have many different pieces. I was then able to remove the pattern from the wood. Now it looks like I overcut the inner pieces, which means that I needed to send them all to size. It's now that I realised that I had a knot in one of the pieces. Now I know it's not major, but it did give me an idea that I could try later on to disguise it. I used the spindle sand to fine tune the pieces and got them all to fit, but if I'm honest they look terrible. I could blame it on my eyesight all day long, but I think this could be a lack of skill issue. So there was only one thing to do and that was sawdust and sea glue which was recommended in the book but I really don't like it as I'm allergic to sea glue and I usually end up making things look worse. After adding the glue and letting it dry out I could see there was a lot of work to do to get this looking half decent. So I gave everything a good sanding and it was starting to look a little bit better. The pieces didn't fit neatly so it was back on the spindle sander for some fine tuning and that made the piece look a lot more presentable. Following the instructions in the book I then had to sand out portions of the wing to give the piece some depth. I would not exactly followed the correct order of the instructions from the book and did have a little bit more filling to do afterwards with the sawdust. Because when I sanded parts away I would opened up a few gaps but that was easily sorted. Now I kind of messed things up a little bit here. I wanted to disguise the knot, so I had this idea of drilling a few spots and filling with milliput, as many butterflies do have spots on their wings which shouldn't look too much out of place. The problem was that the pine is of poor quality, and you never seem to be able to get a clean cut, even when being extra cautious. So I knew that when filled with milliput, they wouldn't look as neat as I'd hoped. But the holes were drilled now and there was nothing that I could do. It was really cold in the workshop, and I was having to use up some odd milliput which was solid. So I gave it a 5 second blast in the microwave that I had in my workshop and it was nice and soft again. Now while I was waiting for the milliput to set, I drew around the pieces for the backing piece and cut that out ready for gluing up, and I gave all the pieces a final sanding. Now as I mentioned before, I really struggle with the sea air fumes, so I opted to use wood glue for sticking the pieces to the backer. So I had to warm the glue up on the radiator and I took the pieces inside as it was just too cold outside. This was a little bit tricky as the pieces kept moving around but it didn't take too long to set. For the finish on the butterfly I used some old kitchen oil that I had left. I warmed it up for a few minutes inside first before giving it a single coat of oil and then letting it dry for 24 hours. For the antenna I used some electrical earth wire and glued them in with CA glue. And that was it. Project Butterfly was complete. All in all, it's a simple project to make, but it's a hard project to get looking neat and professional looking. I've no doubt that I could have made a better job if my eyesight was better, but I have to admit that it still wouldn't have looked perfect, as I do lack necessary skills. If I was to do it again, I'd make sure to read the book several times, and use better wood than I have here, and also take more care when selecting the pieces to make sure that I avoid things like knots. But it is a nice piece to make, and from a distance it doesn't look too bad. Prior to making the videos on YouTube, I worked as a firefighter for nearly 20 years, serving my community and helping to save lives and promote the fire safety message. 
Unfortunately, an accumulation of many upsetting scenes became too much for my mind to cope with, and after years of failed therapy, I was retired from the service on the grounds of ill health and signed off medically from any employment. To keep myself busy, both body and mind, I developed an interest in woodworking and car mechanics and with already having a hobby in filming and music, I combined my interests and started making videos here on YouTube, filming, editing and composing my own music for my woodworking and car restoration channels Smugwood and Smugwood Mini. Unfortunately, to produce such videos comes at a price, and with minimal funds after being retired from employment, I've turned to Patreon to see if there is additional support out there which could allow me to continue making the woodworking and car restoration videos. In return for support, there are various levels which are explained in more depth at the Patreon link below, but includes the chance to win one of my YouTube projects made throughout the year, and also inclusion into random prize draws open to patrons only. In addition, I'd like to thank everybody who already subscribes to my channels, or watches, comments, likes and shares them as it all goes to help support my channels, and for that I'm really appreciative. It's my hope that I can continue making the videos for the foreseeable future. Thanks once again for your continued support. 